Hello everyone, what is going on and welcome back to our career mode journey here with Watford. This is episode 5. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, I'll leave a link to the playlist at the top right hand side of this video. Little eye button, click in there and you can see all of the previous episodes. But as always, I want to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos and I hope you're doing well and having an awesome day as well. If I could ask for just one more bit of incredible support from you all, and if you could leave a like rating and a comment on this video, it would help me out massively. You lot are awesome for all of the support you show me. So yeah, thank you as always for that. Because we have a busy December month, I decided, I know that I'll be playing three matches a month live, but because we have a lot going on this month, I thought I have to play a few more, but I didn't want to do all three as live. So coming up today, there's three post-commentary matches and two live matches. So sit back, relax, and hopefully enjoy as we start up against Chelsea here at Vicarage Road. And if there's ever a time to be playing Chelsea, it is now. They've hit a pretty inconsistent run of form. So I was feeling like, although we were sitting just a place above the relegation zone, if we could take the game to them, maybe we get something from it. And just before the break of the first half, the ball found its way out to Grant on the left-hand side. He whipped the delivery in. And there was Ben Brereton Diaz with an acrobatic header to put us in front here at Vicarage Road and get the place bouncing. As I say, Chelsea being inconsistent. They were sort of down the bottom end of the table, you might remember, after the first few matches. Um, they win a couple of games, then they start dropping more points. And i got to say, in the game that we played here against them, they did not look like a great side or a Chelsea side that you expect to see. So... Yeah, I was quite shocked with how they played. You can see me there. I was buzzing to see that goal go in, but we knew we still had a big second half coming up to try and see out what would be a crucial, crucial win in this game for us. It should have been 2-0, actually. Kalu finding the ball to Ben Brereton, who will be kicking himself at the fact that he didn't make it 2-0. But ladies and gentlemen, full time. Watford won. Chelsea nil at Vicarage Road. What a win that was for us. It was a crucial win. And like I say, you know, to get that, it sets us up for the rest of the episode, hopefully for good things. But then we faced Manchester City. Had to make a few changes for this because it was about four days or three days, in fact, after that Chelsea game. Um, so there were starts for Nkulu and Rose in the starting eleven. Um, and when you look at this City side, you can see they are far, far more clinical than the Chelsea team. And not only clinical, but they create chances with ease. I don't know. Maybe Chelsea are just having one of those seasons where they struggle to get going. That cannot be said about Manchester City. Gabriel Jesus puts them ahead here before 25 minutes in. Raspadori, excellent work to find Bernardo Silva. And without Ben Foster, it would have been 2-0 City. They were running rings around us. Here though, so um, yeah, it was only a matter of time before they did find their second. De Bruyne to Gabriel Jesus. You can see the first shot blocked by Rose. Falls here to Fernandinho. He picks up the loose ball and it was 2-0 Manchester City. So from the jubilation of that win against Chelsea, we were taken back down to earth here against City. Into the second half, Mares to the lap. It should have been three. Foster had a great, uh, great game here in order to deny them. And the only chance we created, we actually took Dennis to Saar. Saar's delivery, we know what to expect from him. Inch perfect. Jao Pedro on the end of the cross. 2-1, a rare lifeline for Watford. But uh, as you're about to see, it didn't really make a difference because City got their third. Delap involved, finding Mares, And he cuts back in on his left foot. And there's really only one place it's going when he does that. And that is in the back of our goal. So City 3, Watford won the full-time result here from Vicarage Road. Still though, given the win we picked up against Chelsea... Got to say, I wasn't really that bothered about losing it here to City. I expected to. And, um, yeah, I expected to lose to Chelsea, but obviously that didn't happen. One final match now, then, before we go into our live games as we took on Brentford. Away at their place, looking at this side and looking at our team. You know what? I was looking at this thinking we could pick up six points out of a possible nine if we play like we know we can. We've just got to make sure when the chances come our way, we finish them. Ismail Assar, right-hand side, another fantastic cross. What a save it was from Raya, but in all honesty as well, Brera and Diaz did sort of head the ball straight at the Brentford goalkeeper. And frustratingly for us, we waste that chance, and then Brentford take their first. Juani with the finish after Ivan Tony found him in the box. Sometimes, though, you need a little bit of luck to get back in the game, and Sars first shot blocked. Second from Ben Brereton, 
Following up, hits Ethan Pinnock. He knows absolutely nothing about it. Not a lot he can do. Can't get out of the way of the shot. And it deflects off him into Brentford's goal at 1-1. And then from that point forward, we took the game to Brentford. Grant, he has been so good for us since signing from West Brom. Across to Ben Brereton, 2-1 before half time. And when we came back out in the second half, we continued to put the pressure on. Look at this, by the way, for a pass. There you go, straight through the line. Grant, as I say, he really has been sensational. That is the word I used to describe him. Because when we signed him from West Brom... I knew he'd play a part, but I just didn't realise the impact he would have on this Watford side as he adds our third before Dennis plays it out to Saar, who also is brilliant throughout this game. He drives forward and adds our fourth in this position. We know when he gets in here, like it is, the shot's on target. Not only that, but it's in the back of the net. Brentford, who had the lead, had ended up going on to concede four without response and lose the game by four goals to one. So one nil against Chelsea... 3-1 defeat to City, 4-1 victory over Brentford. Fantastic results. But what else have we got in store for you in the remaining games? Let's find out. Six points out of a possible nine picked up so far for us today. And we continue with Burnley up next. Just the two live matches for you. We've got Burnley and then we're going to take on Arsenal in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, which means we'll sim Palace, Wolves and West Ham United with the remainder of the games to come today. So yeah, let's see what we can do as we travel to Turf Moor to hopefully continue our form from that game against Brentford last time out, the 4-1 victory. Actually, before that, we do have some scouting reports back. So quickly run through these and uh, we don't have any players from Scotland we want to promote. What about Northern Ireland? Well, we've got this guy, Staunton. We've got Barry Bradley. What a name he's got. David O'Leary, um, and that's three players in from Northern Ireland. And finally, Wales. We'll see if we've got anyone. Mark Bennett, uh, Harry Phoenix, another great name. Lloyd Rakes, another decent name. I mean, have we just got every single... Oh, our youth academy's full. So, sorry, Dylan Bennett. Unfortunately, mate, your time at the club's up. Who else? For now, we don't need to. Kinsella, potential of 85 to 94. Didn't notice that before until now. Yeah, decent. All right, Nathan Prosser, welcome as well. And uh, that is it for the Welsh scouting report. Into the game against Burnley we go. There is the Burnley starting 11 and they sit bottom of the Premier League at the moment. So this is a real opportunity for us to pick up another three points. For us, it's an unchanged starting 11. No, actually there is one change to tell you about. Moussa Sissoko back into midfield in place of Ennis Bardi. Um, but yeah, other than that, that is the only change to our starting eleven. which I'll be honest, I'll be disappointed if we can't get the win here today. Ball into the box and Veghorst is there! And what was our defending? Burnley won Watford nil. Wout Veghorst is on the end of a brilliant delivery. The free kick was given for a handball against Fernandez, And when we gave it away, this free kick, I thought there's no danger really at all. But what a delivery it is. And Veghorst is there. And that has got Turf more bouncing. Sissoko to Saar. Now to Brera and Diaz. Touch out of his feet. Saar continues his run. And Gakia through. Looking for Saar. Great touch. Absolutely brilliant. It's got to be. And it is. It's an equaliser for Watford. And that is what we're capable of. Moves like that. Dennis does not manage to finish on the first time of asking. But the fortune is there. The ball bouncing back for him. And the second time he puts it home. And it is 1-1 here at Turf Moor. I mean, that ball has gone straight through the heart of Watford's defence. It is a fantastic save from Ben Foster against Corner. Who really, I don't know how he managed to get through with so much space. The pass was sensational. And it was actually Cornet's delivery as well that gave Veghorst the opportunity to give Burnley the lead. So, yeah, it was a fantastic delivery from him. And we already seen that Burnley can create from set pieces. And here's another one then. Good Munson this time will take it into the middle. And Cornet again was there. But in the end, it's over the bar. Much to the frustration of Sean Dyche. Good Munson back. Lowton giving away to Grant. His pass not great, but it still works here for Sissoko. And now Dennis to find Fernandez. Fernandez sees the run of Saar, but we need the bodies in the box. Ismail Saar will slow this back down to allow the time for our players to get forward. Sissoko, Kamara, 
Kamara again, back to Sissoko. This is good. Fernandez, Saar, we've worked it well. And Ismail Saar finishes it. Watford 2, Burnley 1. Great finish as well. And initially, when we were forced to turn back with Ismail Saar, I thought the chance had gone, but we still are able to work it really, really well. And then when we get him in that position, he's got the a capability and the quality to finish it. Goal news to tell you about as the ball given away here by Burnley. Brera and Diaz through and it's got to be. It is for Joshua King. It's 3-1 Watford and that might be the goal that does it for us. That was so strange the way the ball ended up going in. The goal I'm trying to tell you about is a goal to put Brentford ahead against Manchester United. And Buemo with that, it's 2-1 over there. And that would be a huge win for them if they managed to hold on to that. Speaking of big wins... We are closing in on ours here. Goalkeeper, well, that's not fantastic. Probably won't want to see it again. And King makes an impact off the bench. Goal kick. It's sent long by the Burnley goalkeeper. Really long, in fact. Trooster Kong is able to win it for Watford, though. And now this might spell danger for Burnley as King given away. Wins it straight back, though. Great work, Joshua King. Saar, Brerett and Diaz. And somehow that's actually gone through to Saar. I wasn't sure it was going to. It's made Saar off the woodwork. Nearly Watford, 4-1 in front, deserved to be so. But no, denied by the post. And that will be that from Turf Moor. Burnley 1, Watford 3. Another big three points for us. Get in. Manchester United were able to salvage a draw as well against Brentford. That finishing 2-2. Two -two. As we now go on to face Palace, which I said I would sim, didn't I? And they're into 14th. The exact same points as us. Uh, but we, importantly, are now six above the relegation zone, which is Brighton on 14, Leeds there on 13, and Burnley on eight. So, yeah, if Leeds go down, there's a couple of players, actually, that we could bring in. Phillips, Rafinha, to name a couple. Um, same for Brighton. You know, more pay, Basuma. Um, and I'm trying to think for Burnley, but I'm not really sure about Burnley. Is Nick Pope still there? Maybe. Uh, Pope could be an interesting signing for us. Because I think next season, we will probably look to sign a new goalkeeper. Ben Foster's doing well. But this will probably be his last season at the club, really, realistically. How many points are we away from the top seven? What's that? Eight? Yeah. I mean, European football would be a bit of a ambitious aim. But it's one that we could still do. Although, I doubt it. Right, Palace. What's our side going to look like for this? You know what? That's fine. Let's just go ahead. Quick sim. Please, can we get a result? I'll be honest, I don't think we'll win or, or pick up any points out of the three sim matches. I imagine we'll lose all three, but I really want to play in the cup quarterfinal against Arsenal. So, first one is here. What will it be? 3-2! Get in! Brewer and Diaz, Grant, and Trooster Kong on the score sheet, Zaha and Anderson for them. And for the first time, you know what? We had four shots, scored three of them. I actually feel like the team, because normally what happens to me is the opposition have really low shots and score like 75% of them. But no, we did it there. And right then, here we go. Arsenal quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup. We saw that we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in the last episode. Got the 1-1 draw. We welcomed them to Vicarage Road. And it is a big, big opportunity for us to reach a semi-final here. And I am actually going to make a change. Brevet and Diaz is going to drop out uh, for fitness issue. And King is going to come in. And there's a temptation as well. As good as Saar is, he's not quite fully fit. So let's start Kalu. And if we need to, we've got the option to bring Saar off the bench in-game. Granit Xhaka starting at left midfield for Arsenal. Interesting. Not sure about that. You watch. He'll go and he'll probably assist a goal and score one tonight. Big opportunity here for us to reach the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. We look ready for it. So too do Arsenal though. And we are off at Vicarage Road. Home fans behind us, can we do this? Let's find out. It's been a very slow first half of football here at Vicarage Road. Neither side really got going yet. Xhaka with a cross, a Kong with the block. But it'll fall here again for Granit Xhaka. This time plays it back to Nuno Tavares, who skips around the challenge. Xhaka playing at this left midfield spot, given away to Fernandez. Now King, and that will take us into half time. We need some changes because we need to try and inject some inspiration into this Watford side. So far, not looked good. Sissoko to the substitute, Jao Pedro. Now to Kalu. Skips round Tomiyasu. This is a real opportunity now to put a testing delivery into the Arsenal penalty area, which we do. And it's a handball against Gabriel. The shot in the end 
Off the hand of Arsenal's number six from Joshua King. And it's a chance from the penalty spot. It does just touch him on his fingertips. Whether or not that stops the ball going goalwards is a different story entirely. And Joshua King has taken responsibility for the penalty. And it will be King up against Bird Leno then to give Watford the lead here at Vicarage Road. King steps up, bottom corner, Watford 1, Arsenal 0. Beautiful penalty, Joshua King. Tavares now trying to put a cross into the box, but Ngaki are not allowing it here. As he's tried to play his ball out to Sado, it's cut out by Xhaka. Now Enketia near post, great save Foster. Fernandez through to Saar, it's a fantastic ball. And Saar, the angle's quite tight, but it doesn't matter. He loves being in that position, and that is why Watford 2 0 up and surely through to the Carabao Cup quarterfinals, semi finals. Not quarterfinals, this is the quarterfinals, the semi finals. And Fernandez with a pass, what a ball it was. But then it's all about Ismail Assar as he finishes into the top left corner of the goal. Leno trying to make the angle tight, but Sar's been in this position a few times this season. Loves hitting the ball back across the goalkeeper into that corner. And Ketia, Tavares, through to Smith Rowe. A Kong, that is a great challenge from Truster Kong to deny Smith Rowe an opportunity. Three minutes added on by the referee. And Watford are heading to the Carabao Cup semi finals, my friends. One achievement in season number one. And not only that, if we could get a mid table finish as well, it would be a great season in my books as there's 30 seconds left. Smith Rowe and Ketia straight at Foster. And that is the full time whistle. Watford 2. Arsenal nil. And now we get an offer to manage Scotland. But as I said, I'm going to wait till season two or three before I decide on an international management opportunity. The other one being from Canada. So, yeah, not interested in that. Sorry to Canada as we have two final matches, which are both going to be simmed. Wolves first and then... As I realise, I need to put Ismail Asar back into the starting eleven. Kalu also picked up an injury against Arsenal. It looks like he's going to be out. How long for, though? Four weeks with a pulled quad injury. Not ideal. So, Saar will return back to that right midfield spot. And uh, we'll go ahead and sim our final two games here. Who could we actually replace Kalu with on the bench? Don't have another winger. And that might be something we look to bring in in the January transfer window. Because we don't have much squad depth in that position. Nevertheless, let's bring Brerett and Diaz back in as well. And Ngaki are now at 72 rated, progressing pretty nicely. So, Wolves. I wasn't expecting to win the last game against Palace. So, I guess, same thing here. Let's see. Quick sim. And it is another victory. 3-2. Grant double. Saar with one. Love to see it. Into the last one before January, which is West Ham United. And then that'll take us into the January transfer window. We're up into 10th. Come on. What a... What? What a run we're on. Oh, West Ham are in third. Ah, so this, this might be tough. Um, yeah, Jared Bowen, Antonio, still got a lot of their core players. Let's see, quick sim, and well, it had to end at some point. 3-2, Grant with another goal though. Dennis with one as well. Cresswell with 90th minute winner though. I'd have taken a point as well. That's unfortunate. Nevertheless, that, my friends, takes us into January, which is where... We will end today's episode. There's an offer from River Plate for Ismail Assar. Was not expecting to get one from, uh, from River Plate, I'll be honest. But there it is. And as we advance the day, we go to January. And there it is then. So, the end of today, we'll take a look at our squad. Um, sorry, not our squad report. Well, we will take a look at the squad report as well. As we've got a few players being recalled. Tufan and Atebo, both going back to their parents' club because they've not... And, uh, and Kutka, because they've not played enough games. Right, well, we are going to look in January then to um, strengthen the squad a little bit. In terms of our youth academy, here it is. Uh, these are the players that we currently have. O'Grady, 63 rated. Duncan Jones, 62. Uh, Potential-wise, though, Kinsella is the best potential in this youth academy. And at some point, we'll look to start promoting these guys and uh, maybe loaning them out or potentially selling one for money. As I've just noticed, Phoenix, unfortunately, mate, your time is up. So, too, is Beatles. We'll get rid of both of those guys. And, uh, yeah, that is our Youth Academy. Into the league table, though. And we are up into 11th. 26 points. 11 clear now of Brighton in 18th. And if we look further down, Burnley and Leeds still make up the bottom three. 
Up the top end of the table, though, it's Liverpool and Manchester United, who are joint top on the exact same points, separated by goal difference. West Ham behind them, Villa up into fourth, and Spurs in fifth, Arsenal sixth, City seventh, Leicester eighth. And uh, as I say, we are into 11th. For the Carabao Cup, though, this is our semi-final draw, then. We will take on Spurs. Yeah, it'll be a double-leg header, Leicester and City in the other semi-final. To reach the semi-final is one thing. Um, so from this point forward, whatever happens, happens. We'll try our best, of course, and see what we can do in that one. Um, but that is the quarter-final. And as I show you our squad report, this is the team that we have heading into the January transfer window. If you want to check it out in any more detail and see how the players have got on in terms of goals, assists, and all of that good stuff, pause it on whichever player you guys want to check out in more detail. But as always, I want to say a massive, massive thank you for all of your support. I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I hope that you continue to do so as well. If you are new around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below to follow me on the channel. Hit the notification bell as well to make sure you never miss an upload. Until next time, stay safe, have a great day, have a great evening, and I will catch you all again with episode number six this coming Monday. Because when you're watching this, it should be Friday. And of course, these episodes go out 6pm UK time every Monday to Friday, the weekdays. Um, so yeah, episode six and the January transfer window will be this Monday. Until then, adios.